good morning so today what is the topic topic is nature and scope of hrm now we all know what is hrm human resource management now when you say human resource what do you understand by this human resource is it some, something like you know money or or some other asset what do you understand by human resource man power so see his understanding is that it is a power a resource is a power so whoever possesses a resource has that power with him someone else says service what exactly do you mean by service human resource training people in a particular task training people in a particular task all right so what she feels this is like a potential asset once you train the asset right it becomes productive okay any other any other view on this human resource you know we talk of land being a resource labor being a resource ha huh? in the old days we used to call it labor machinery being some resource if you own it so do you own the human resource land you can own all right machinery you can own materials you can own can you own the human resource you can that means a kind of slave you own me for instance no it's in a different context what is that context just like you own land you certainly don't own a human resource do you we all agree we don't own at one time maybe in the past in some societies even a human resource used to be owned right like bonded labor or slavery nowadays society doesn't permit that it's wrong so then what happens then? as an employer are you going to own the human resource no so therefore how are you going to utilize if you don't own you are to hire that means you enter into a agreement right in a kind of contract and that agreement always comes why because there is a mutual need right you would like to work for me and i want someone like you to work for me maybe your qualifications your experience all right the type of attitude you have that may in my opinion fit into my kind of organization right so we enter into a contract so contract is what we agree mutually that you will deliver x y z and i in return will deliver a b c that's a contract contract has a certain time period and it has some other terms and conditions like how much remuneration you will get what are your rights and what are your responsibilities likewise what are my rights and what are my responsibilities so you see in the modern organizational setup managing of human beings all right is managing of people all right whom you don't own it's not a resource like land so the point you have to see is a little different the way you will manage machines or money you cannot manage human beings in the same manner right and therefore some of the people nowadays they object in fact to this terminology they say that you cannot say human resource they are not resource in the same connotation as your other resources other classical resources like money and land and material it's wrong to say human resource you should not say that because there is no ownership here do you agree with that view but anyway whether we agree or not generally in industry now 
and in business, all right. It has been accepted generally that human resource is a terminology which may be used in many organizations. In fact, the department in every company which manages the people of the company, people, the people management is often called the HR department, human resource department, okay. Their role is to manage the people. Any questions at this stage? Before this HR phenomenon, there used to be something called personnel management. Have you heard about that? Huh? And is there any difference do you think or is just a, f a fashion, you know, nowadays we just call it fashionable to say human resources management and not personnel management. Okay, good. See, what he says is there is a kind of distinction in the management of people in terms of division of the work. The management of people may comprise of many assets or many facets, aspects or facets of management. So, he says the recruitment part of it is called personnel management and the HRD is the training and development part of it. Okay. This is somewhat correct, but generally what is accepted and we will see that later on is definition of human resources management concentrates not only on your contract, there is a contract between the employee and the management, but goes beyond that, beyond. That means it addresses you as an individual, not a collective body with whom you have a contract. Clear or not clear? When I address you as an individual, what are the things I look for? I look for your well-being also, apart from my fulfilling the terms of the contract. I also look at you beyond that. I say, all right, I am giving him the salary, all right, he is doing the work, there is no breach of contract, but after all he is a human being. He has got his needs, wants, aspirations, motivational aspects. Am I looking at that or I am looking at him as a pay slip number? You know, all of us have a pay slip number in, in, in any organization. And in some organizations like education institutions, we have a, do not we have a number? Role number, is it not? Always you will write name, role number. And in large organizations, it also happens that people are more or less reduced because they are large numbers, not to names, but they are reduced to numbers. Department, it may be an alphanumeric numbering code, you know. Department ME, so you are, you will be ME 1001. So, you see the dehumanization, you are reducing a human being into a number. So, in the extreme nuance of the term, it means personal management deals with a contract, contract which is something impersonal, written on paper, away from the focus on the human being. Whereas, HR management, if the focus is on the human being, of course, there is a contract too, that is not the main focus. Main focus is you address as an employer holistically who are the human beings you have and how you can fulfill their aspirations and in turn it is believed employers who do HR and not PM personal management. They believe that in return the employees will be so well motivated that they will give you something beyond the contract, what they have not contracted to do. They will delight you, they will give you more than you expect. Any questions? So, nature and scope of HRM. Now, there are many scholarly definitions for HRM, all right. Here is one. 
But before they say HRM, they talk of the human resource, which we talked about a little while ago. And that is a whole consisting of interrelated, interdependent and interacting physiological, psychological, sociological and ethical components. Nothing seems to be left out. It's a very, very comprehensive, right? Definition of human resource by Michael Jusius. Here's another one. Human resources represent the total of the inherent abilities. Again, total acquired knowledge and skills and exemplified in the talents and aptitude of its employees. What is aptitude? Is it same as attitude? No. no. What is aptitude? Then? Internal, knowledge. Internal knowledge. Is that aptitude? How you see the thing? Reasoning power. Aptitude actually means your potential and ability all right, to acquire some knowledge or some skills. When you have aptitude tests, we try to find out whether you have an aptitude for manual dexterity, let us say, you know, you are good at doing things with your fingers or you have an aptitude for pattern recognition, okay, that is aptitude. And what is attitude? We all know what is attitude. Values and attitudes. So, attitude is what? It's a judgmental or evaluative frame of mind or state of mind in relation to some person, some object, some episode, some principle. Okay. And it is based on certain values you have. What core values you have that shapes your attitude. Example, if your value is that every employer, all right, has a duty and responsibility to give safe working conditions. That is your value because you feel that they are duty bound. Then your attitude will be that if he has not given you very good conditions, he is not a good employer. But on the other hand, if his attitude is that employers by and large all right, will try to make maximum profits. So, anything which goes against maximum profit, they may not you know, provide. So, whatever they are provided, be happy with it. You see the difference in the attitude is based on the values. So, any questions? Now, here is another view which we said sometimes is not accepted nowadays. Human resources may be considered as human capital. So, he is making an analogy. Capital means money, right, or any other asset, right. So, he says it is just like any other asset you may consider it as. Comprising, but this human capital is a conglomeration or a it is comprising of many things, intellectual capital, social capital and emotional capital. Now, when you say capital, automatically it has a connotation or meaning and what is that? That is an asset. What is the connotation of asset? That it may be used to multiply many other things, to earn something beyond. So, if you have a capital of 1 lakh of rupees, what is the meaning of that word capital? What does it convey to you? That a capital is capable of multiplying. Okay? Sometimes we use the term dead asset. What does it mean? That is you are negating the whole idea of an asset. You have gold, lot of jewelry and is locked up in the locker. 
you only take it out two or three times a year when there is a wedding function. Is that gold earning anything? Nothing much. So we call it a dead asset. But you convert it into money by shares of good companies and the share prices increase and from time to time they give you bonus shares. What is happening? Your capital is multiplied. So, this is a view of Dr. Sumantra Ghoshal. Intellectual capital is specialized knowledge, tacit knowledge and skills, cognitive complexity and learning capacity. And social capital is network of relationships, sociability and trustworthiness. That is social capital, very important for interpersonal relationships. Emotional capital is self-confidence, ambition and courage, risk bearing ability and resistance. Why resistance? Resistance to change may be in an organization. You as a management you are thinking of bringing in change and the people there, your human capital as he is saying will resist that change also or may cooperate. So, that is another perspective, this is another view of this definition right of human resources. Any questions? So, now having seen what is human resources, we come to human resources management HRM. So, simply put HRM is a process for making efficient and effective use of human resources, so that the set goals are achieved. Okay. Again we have seen this in the past, but in management terms we use this word efficient and effective sometimes not to mean the same thing. Do you remember what, how we have differentiated the concept of efficiency from effectiveness? Anyone remembers? If I ask you, can you tell me the difference between effectiveness and efficiency in an organization? Achieving a goal is being effective. Achieving the goal economically is efficient. Would you accept that definition? Huh? Partly. Why partly? Why not wholly? Why not wholly? Because you think effectiveness means that it should have been in an efficient manner, is it? Well, effect, effectiveness usually is meaning the mission, as he said the goal, the task, have you done it or not? If you do an excellent operation, excellent operation and you are a surgeon, right? And you do it in a very, very good efficient manner, all right, in the least time, least blood loss and so on and you get full marks, it is a very efficient operation, but the patient dies. What he is trying to say is the whole mission and the goal was that the operation was not an end in itself. Operation was an enabling act to save a life, let us say, or heal a person. So, if the person died, then the mission was ineffective. But the surgeon who performed it, you cannot blame him, maybe there were other factors. He did it very efficiently. So, we have said in organizations, if each of the departments all right, perform their work extremely well, and they do it at the least cost, quickest time, but ultimately the patient or rather the customer is not happy. Then we say that in that case there has been an ineffectiveness, but efficiency has been there. Clear or not? I think we discussed this earlier. And that is why in organization structures, 
Sometimes we change the structure from a bureaucratic, functional oriented structure to a structure which is more of matrix nature. Is it not? Okay, any questions? So HRM is concerned with the people dimension in management. Since every organization is made up of people, acquiring their services, developing their skills, motivating them to higher levels of performance and ensuring that they continue to maintain their commitment to the organization are essential to achieving organizational objectives. Okay. So you can see that how we are approaching the human resource management from the point of view of human behavior. You know, words like commitment, right? Motivation, developing skills, right? Developing skills would be part of giving a path of self-actualization motive. If you are in an organization where you feel that you are at a dead end, you are not going to learn anything more than you have learnt in college, you will become demotivated. So organizations which provide you with policies whereby you can, let us say, take study leave and go and retain your job, such policies, they are helping you to develop yourself. So therefore, these are very comprehensive definitions of human resource management which addresses individual people as individuals and not as mere numbers. Here is another and this is by the National Institute of Personnel Management. Let us see what they say. Do they take a personnel management stance or they take a human resource management stance? That part of management which is concerned with people at work and with their relationship within an enterprise. It, its aim is to bring together and develop into an effective organization of men and women who make up an enterprise having regard for the well-being of the individual and of the working groups to enable them to make the best contribution for its success. So what is it more concerned with this definition? With the individual or the group? Yes? Groups or individual? groups. So what is the kind of view this is taking? They are after all the National Institute of Personnel Management. They seem to be taking a kind of pluralist we call it, right? That means collective view, that here is a body of people, you have to manage them. So they are taking a group kind of perspective, which is not what we said is a human resource kind of perspective. The human resource perspective is the human being, individual. So we can call it the unitarist, okay, not the pluralist. Now it says essence of HRM. A process of procuring, developing and maintaining competent human resources in the organization so that the goals of an organization are achieved in an efficient and effective manner. So the entire essence you can summarize here. First is it is a process of procuring. Procuring means what? Recruiting, selecting, all right, appointing, and then developing and maintaining. 
developing. How do you develop? So the next sequence is have you, having selected and appointed. You must induct them into your organization, orient them into what are the values of your organization, all right? And maintaining competent resources. How do you give competence? By training them. Many companies, they take engineers, you know, B-Tech or M-Tech, but they don't leave it at that. They want to train them to their particular kind of operations. Say the B-Tech, all right, whom they have taken has a general degree, but this company is engaged in making switch gear. They have taken electrical engineers. So now they'll train them in competence of their line of business, that is switch gear. More in-depth training about switch gear. Okay. And all this is for what, of course, for achieving in an efficient and effective manner, all right, the organization's goals. All right. And the art of managing people at work so that they give their best to the organization. Now, here again you have the PM concept that is personnel management concept or HR concept. HR, because the PM concept says it is a contract really. You are supposed to do this job for getting this pay and you do the job. So, you are fulfilling your contract. But HR says goes beyond that, both on the part of the employer as well as on the part of the employee. There are certain organizations, usually organizations which are owner managed, that is the person who owns it manages it also, where they have what we call a paternalistic kind of management, paternalistic philosophy. That means if you are loyal to me as an employee, you do all your work, whatever I ask you to do. I will in turn look after everything. When you are sick, I will look after you, your family members. Marriage of your children, all right, if you want money for that. Higher education for your children, if you want to send abroad. All these social and things which are included or which are the responsibilities of you as a family uh, head. I as an employee will look after that also. So, this is paternalistic, taking the responsibility. So, what do you think is the better system? The professional system of contract or human resource approach? Human resource approach. But human resource approach, would you like to sell your soul to the employer? Because you have to be loyal to him absolutely loyal. You have to do what it says or you prefer a contract. You come, you do your job efficiently, you earn your money and you lead your private life as you would like to lead. So, you see there are issues which are quite complex, not simple issues. A paternalistic type of approach can impinge into privacy, all right, can lead to regimentation, which in turn can be viewed as removal of personal liberty, liberties of the individual and the other way around. But not necessarily, it is, it is possible to have a system of human resource management, all right, which on the one hand has the good points of the paternal system embodied in it, all right, and the good points of the professional system also. That is, it gives the employee enough elbow room or space to have their private life, but at the same time looks after not only his workplace needs, but his life needs to some extent beyond his workplace. There is a kind of ideal, right? utopian employer. Any comments, views on this? Because you will have to be dealing with this from two angles. As employers, when you are in higher positions and also as employees in all positions, whether high or low.
Anyone who prefers the paternalistic, I call it the my bap system of all right, managing human resources. You do as I say and I will look after you. Don't worry, just come and work here. All your needs I'll take care of. No? Some, some people are shaking their head. Why not? All your responsibilities are over. Boss, the set will look after you. Lala ji. What's wrong in it? Totally control. Why do you say control? Because whenever you have some need, he will give it. Do you mean that he will want his pound of flesh in return? Totally control? Yes, you are in deep thought. What do you think? These are issues you have to face soon when you get your M-Tech and you go out. Maybe we are all utopians. We want the best of both the worlds, right? Whether we can get it or not depends on our internal locus of control. If you take the view, it's fate and destiny. Where I get a job and where I spend my working life. Or you can say that I look for employers who fit my definition and I'll try to get a job with those employers. So that I make my own destiny and fit. Isn't it? So it's your choice. Okay? So that is the essence of HRM. And whilst we have been discussing this for the last half an hour, we have been touching upon these two kinds of opposites. One is the personal approach and the other is the human resource approach. So here is a little chart, you see which is trying to summarize that. So, human resource management HRM and personnel management PM comparison dimensions. So, PM is pluralist as we have said and HRM is unitarist means individual looking at the individual. Perception of conflict this is another dimension. The old school, you know, personnel managers, their perception was that conflict is always there in the institution, institute, uh, institutions. It is institutionalized. It is always there. So, it has to be managed. Okay. Remember what we learned about conflict? There are certain views of, schools of thought of conflict. Remember? There is a traditional school of thought, we said, traditional school, which says conflict is always there. Always, there. Huh. always bad. So, whenever you have conflict in the organization, get rid of it. And then we said there is another school, which says conflict is inevitable. You have to accept it and manage it. That is, manage it so that it does not become destructive, does not become dysfunctional. But you contain it and manage it. Nothing good about it is inevitable, so manage it. And the third, what was the third school? It is necessary. They say you should welcome it. Managers, in fact, should promote some sort of a conflict, of course, constructive conflict. Why? Because it gives the best out of people or takes the best out of their people. They perform best when there is some constructive tension, conflict or competition. Now, here it says conflict is institutionalized. So, the traditional personal management kind of view, all the personal managers would say conflict to hai, problem to hoga. Our job is to manage it. Union ka problem hoga, staff ka problem hoga, problems will be there because conflicts are there. That is their view. And what is the view of HRM? Conflict is pathologized. What does that mean? What is pathology? 
You have heard of pathologist? You have heard of pediatrician? Huh? What is pediatrician? Huh? Child specialist, right. Pathologist? Testing. When do you do tests? Diagnostic tests. Try to diagnose. Diagnose when you do that? When someone has become sick or ill, not normal. So the view pathologist means conflict, all right, is not always there. It should not be there. If it is there, it must be treated and got rid of. That means it is not normal. You see, it is the other point of view. What they say is that what is normal is the harmony, people working together. This is the view we take. And therefore, we try to treat if there is a disharmony. Now, is it the same as the view, traditional view of conflict that is bad? Is this the, exactly the same view? What was the traditional view of conflict? Conflict is bad. Moment it comes, get rid of it. Is it? It is not really the same. It says that conflict, if it is there, it is not normal. What they say is, all organizations, their view is, would generally work in harmony. But if conflict comes, and it will come, it is something which is aberration. It is not normal. Therefore, manage it. Like the view, all human beings, most of our life will be healthy, right? But sometimes we will fall ill. Is there anyone who never falls ill in all his life? No, we will fall ill. If we fall ill, then we will diagnose, we will take treatment. Now, you see the difference in the views? Everyone sees that. So, which view are you subscribing to? The PM kind of view or the HR kind of view? HR kind. Everyone likes to be the HR kind. That is why even companies which do not practice HR, let me tell you, they are quietly changing the name and saying HR department. <laughs> because you cannot change human beings. There are many human beings in the HR department and in the other department, maybe including the CEO who believes in PM method, but he puts HR method to attract young people like you, you know. So, this is the HR department, this is very modern, looks after you, right idea. So, we have a term which we say, some things are politically correct or politically incorrect. So, this is a politically correct view you now. HR, but do not get fooled. Every company has HR, but many companies do not practice HR, they do not believe in it. They believe in PM. Next is contract. We talked about that, isn't it? So, emphasis on compliance. Inspector Raj, you have a contract, have you done it? What is your contract? You will come in at 9 o'clock and you will go out at 5 o'clock. So, have you come in at 10 o'clock? Breach of contract. Non compliance, or you have left early. And the other view is beyond contract commitment. So, today you have some problem, your child is not well, okay, take half day off, it is all right. But tomorrow there is a deadline to meet because there is a big tender with a deadline and we have to submit the tender. You may have to work the whole night through, not as per contract, but this is the view. So, it goes both sides. When it is your need, we look after. When it is our need, you must look after. Role of procedures in this dimension, you see, roles dominated, culture and values dominated. What is the role? Boss and subordinate. That is the role. You play the role, each one of us, uh, most of us, unless we are very, very junior. We are also a boss to some people. At the same time, we have our own boss and we have to play the role, different roles in different cases. But what is culture and values dominated? It means that your roles then take a back seat. 
and in your day to day relationships in the workplace and also outside the workplace, what you are looking at then is more the interrelationships or the interactions or the relationships which are made out of cultural values, not so much the role values. So, the line between the boss and the subordinate is not in the foreground, it is in the background, is not it? There are many formalized institutions huh, where you have to be very formal because the role of boss and subordinate is very predominant. Example, our own IIT here, is it not? But there are some institutions in some other cultures, maybe in America, but they are not so. Students will come and they will not so much as buy your leave, they will just come with a Coca Cola in their hand, you know, a glass and walk and sit there at the back and maybe put their feet also, maybe I am exaggerating a bit, but they accept it there. Here, if the instructor comes, everyone stands up. So, here the role of instructor, student is very much in the foreground. Does it mean someone who comes the Coca Cola is a bad student or is being disrespectful? Not necessarily. Culturally there, they are focusing more not on the role, but on the cultural aspects. Okay. Planning perspective, ad hoc and reactive and for HRM integrated and proactive. What does this mean? Ad hoc and reactive. That means you wait for some problems to come, some issues to develop. You think that unless there are issues, everything is all right. But is it all right always? If there are no issues and no problem, if the factory is running, there is no strike, no assault, okay, no overt indiscipline. Do you think you are happy? You should be happy. Factory is running well? No. You have to take precaution. But why? If you are running well, everything is okay. Where is the question of precaution? It may happen in future. It may happen in future. But what is happening now? Is everything okay? That is my question. People are working, is it okay? Some may say it is not okay because they are not working at their full potential. Their productivity could be improved much further. But there are no problems. There is no slogan shouting, there is no go slow. Okay, there is no indiscipline. On the surface, everything seems to be okay. So, there is no cause for management to intervene. We wait. Moment there is some cause, then we solve. So, reactive, we react, we do not proact. What is proactive? We say, all right, last year our productivity was 80 percent in the factory. Now, this year people let us set a target because competitors should not overtake us. So, let us decide and agree that we will make it 85 percent this year. Let us set the target. What are you doing? Proacting. Is there a problem? No, not yet. But as he has said, in the future, they may be competitors may go ahead. So, you proact. So, that is the proactive and integrated, not ad hoc. Integrated means what? It looks at the whole company, not only one department or one part. Integrated. Acceptability of unions, very important this. PM acceptable, HRM not desirable. Why? Why do you think that view? I thought HRM people are very liberal. Huh? Why should they say unions are not desirable? Yes? Taking care of all the needs. He is right. Because it is mutually exclusive in principle. What is union's role? What are they supposed to do? interest of the people. What he says is, if the management 
is looking after the interests of the people, not as a contract, but holistically everything. Where is the role of the union? Would we accept that view? Yeah. So when you are managers, you will see that no union comes in the factory. But for that, you have to walk your talk. It's not easy, all right, to avoid exploitation. There are always bosses, you know, who try to take advantage if there is no check and balance. So it's very difficult to do. But in concept, if truly you practice HR, that is human resource kind of management, instead of PM, then there should be no need for a union. Any questions? These are some other dimensions, you see, level of trust, key relation, management's role, basis of job design, key people, skill acquisition, reward management. Any questions about all these dimensions? Key people, PM stroke IR specialists, here line people and general managers. What does that mean? When you take, you have to see it against what is the perspective of personnel management and what is the perspective of human resources management. Personnel is reactive, right? Something happens, something goes wrong, you have to sort it out. So, PM and IR specialists, they must know the labor laws, they must know what are the industrial disputes act, uh, what is the workers compensation act, uh, they must be well versed in this, what is the factories act, what are the conditions which you are supposed to provide and line people and managers, do they know all these laws and acts, they don't know. They are supposed to know marketing, operations, they are line, line people, isn't it? And where are they going to focus, right? Here, since they are focusing on individuals and the individuals are working in which department? In the HR department or PM department? No. Few individuals are there, but the bulk of the individuals are in the operating department, right? So if they are in the operating department, in a HR kind of a philosophy, who should be looking after the individuals? line people and general managers, because they are their employees. Think about it. You are say a manufacturing manager and you have 500 people with you. Anything goes wrong, are you going to immediately throw your hands up and say, look, I don't know. You have to go to personal department, because they are your people. You should be concerned with it, right? So the key people here are line people and general managers, because management of people is done by whom? Where are most of the people? They are in the operating departments. And personal department people are more of a specialist nature. Okay. Therefore, they are specialists. Any other points where you want clarification? Learning organization. Learning organization and training and development. Learning organization means that as an organization experiences, all right, many difficulties or has many triumphs, okay, it should be documented so that not only one department knows about what has happened, but it spreads into the larger body of the organization. And therefore, nowadays what they try to do for an organization to learn, you must disseminate all the knowledge which is coming in various parts of the organization, disseminate it widely throughout the organization. And one way to do it is to work in teams, to work in task forces. That is, if you have a project, right, instead of the project department having the responsibility to do it, you 
assemble a task force you say for the project what are the kind of knowledge and skills which are required and if these are available in marketing department you tell them that you give me for one year or six months one good person if it is the department HR department take from them. So, you build a team with cross functional expertise when you build a team with that expertise for executing a certain project during the execution of the project the team members keep learning right something about the other departments work also. So, you have a automatically mechanism is there for dissemination of the information or whatever being done that is a learning organization we call it right. Essentially learning or in essence is whatever knowledge or expertise or skill is available in any part of the organization should be disseminated and dis dispersed and diffused into all parts of the organization. So, that the entire mass of people in the organization the whole they can also take part in the learning process and why because that way the organization becomes so much the better more productive and therefore, can perform its goals beat the competition and be better. Do you agree with it? I think it is it is something which we intuitively we accept because when you are totally compartmentalized in departments what are you doing? You are learning more and more about less and less till you learn everything about about nothing is not it that is extreme specialization that is a joke huh? you do PhD do post doctorate after that huh? then continue to do research, but on only one area say you are doing medical research you do in just one limited area so much so you stop reading any books magazines watching TV. So, finally, you know nothing except that one little specialty uh, which we do not encourage in IIT you must have breadth courses apart from your depth courses right. So, any questions otherwise we take a break of 5 minutes thank you.